Using Fritzing Advanced Level Schematic View Next we'll look at Schematic View and the first thing we'll cover is common mistakes. This is what you usually get from beginners and the first thing you'll notice is junctions in the wrong places. A junction is supposed to signify the connection of different lines but where's the different lines here when there's only one wire? There's no junction here so we assume they're not connected but the lack of a junction here is telling us there's no connection here either when there actually should be a connection. And this comes about because people don't know how to make junctions, so they put lines on top of lines. Here is an example of being fooled by a connection due to not using junctions. Here we see a four wire connection, and all the connector indicators show green. But when we click on a pin, we can see it's two separate two wire connections on top of each other. This one looks exactly the same, but let's click on a pin. And again, it's two separate two wire connections on top of each other, but from a different direction. Over here we have proper junctions, and when we click on a pin, it shows all four connected, which is what the junctions are signifying. Junctions are pretty safe, because it's hard to have a false connection under a big black junction dot. To fix this, we click on the line, then we delete it. We select the other line. Too much of this line will be affected, so we right click and delete up to bend point. We delete this overlapping line, and this pin joiner line. We rejoin the pin connector line. Grab the line and space it out one grid square. Now we have to create a bend point in the middle of the line, so you double click on it to create one and double click to remove one. You can also right click on a line and add bend point. Or you can just grab a wire and snap it back. Next we have to join to the bend point, so we can either drag a wire down from the pin to the bend point, or if you want to go from the bend point up, you hold the Alt key down, click on the bend point and drag the wire up to the pin at the top. Junctions move when you make a connection, so you have to snap them back. Next we need a bend point here. We connect our line again, and snap it back in position. Our junction has moved off the grid snap point, so we'll have to snap it back. And finally we do a double check to make sure everything is connected. And that's how you do proper junctions. It seems a bit annoying that a junction point moves when you make a connection, but it's actually a good opportunity to check connections by grabbing the joint and rotating it and seeing if all the wires move with it. You could argue it's a fritzing safety check feature. Another thing you don't do is have a four wire junction. It's bad electrical practice and can cause confusion. You use three wire junctions, but you offset them. Despite it being bad practice, fritzing has a problem with four wire junctions. If you grab a four wire junction and move it around, you'll notice one wire doesn't move. But when you click on it, it all lights up like it's connected. Then when you grab the wire, weird things start happening. Either way, stick to the offset three wire junctions. Another thing you don't do is touch pins and expect a connection. Fritzing will even indicate the no connection by displaying red pins. And it's best to leave a one grid gap and put an actual black trace between the two parts as a kind of visual indicator. It's the same with part pins and lines. Leave a one grid space so you can actually see the black line connection. A junction touching a part pin is not a good idea either. You're much more sure of connection when you see a black line between them. Special buttons for schematic view in core bin are ground, DC power, general power and net label. Net labels are virtual connections between circuits without drawing a line. If you grab a net label and give it a name, whatever net label has the same name, here I type 5V will now be connected. Next we have this schematic frame and that's these border frames and if you click select them you can lock them and then they can't be moved. These border frames can be used to describe the function of a part of a circuit. Text is the usual text, just type it in in inspector and the last button is add a drawing. Next is layout protocols. The general layout of a schematic should be inputs on the left, outputs on the right, all powers are up, and all grounds must face down. If you want a tutorial on what not to do, go to EV blog 1129. Drawing sketches in schematic view is the easiest once you learn junctions because it's a symbolic representation of a circuit. It's like music notation is a shorthand for conveying a song. All you have to do is set your grid to 100 thou and everything will snap in the right position. Then it's just straight lines on the grid with 90 degree turns and T-junctions. Selections in this view are also box select from outside the frame or hold the control key down and click on whatever you want. Now we'll look at Fritzing's live connected views. If you pull a part into one view, it will be pulled into all the other views at the same time. This is different from other EDAs, because they insist you fill out the schematic first, export the part list into the PCB view, and then lay it all out. 
Both methods have pluses and minuses, but it's Fritzing's live connected view that catches people out when they don't pay attention to the fine details. As an example, we have two resistors connected on a breadboard. But when people go to another view, they fail to see the significance of this rat's nest line and will force a connection to any pin, usually the closest, because they don't realise there's a difference. Basically, they fall into the trap of thinking symmetrical non-polarised parts are the same no matter where you connect to. But if you go back, you'll notice now there's a rat's nest line on your breadboard view, which people don't see or ignore because it blends in with all the other colours. And the reason a rat's nest line appears is a resistor is not just a resistor, it has ends. If we hover over this end, that's pin 0, that's pin 1, that's pin 0, that's pin 1. But if we go to PCB, 0, 1, 1, 0. This resistor has been rotated 180 degrees and the wrong end is closer to the other resistor. Basically every pin on every part is numbered and they have to match in all views. In schematic view some people draw numbers on their pins but this might not be the same as the internal connector number inside the part. Like this shows number 1 but when you hover it shows pin 0. This one shows pin 1 even though it says number 2. If you go inside the part and go to connectors these are the numbers that appear when you hover over a pin. So just watch out for that. Also keep an eye out for diodes because they have a black line through the centre which can mask lines and dark coloured rat's nests. In Fritzing's there's a difference between solid lines and dotted rat's nest lines. Solid lines don't like to change even if you change something in another view because Fritzing assumes that's what you definitely want connected and that means if you try to change something it'll try to persist whereas rat's nest lines will change dependent on the solid connections in a different view. If we look at this resistor in this circuit in breadboard view, it's connected solidly to the IC. And in schematic, solidly to the IC. And in PCB, also solidly to the IC. Now let's rotate this resistor around. Grab a bend point. Delete up to bend point. Delete trace. But this time we'll delete the rat's nest. We spin our resistor. We now put our solid connections back here and here, remembering there are solid connections in the other views. Now look at the breadboard. The part gets pushed off the breadboard and it's connected with wires and that's because Fritzing is trying to reflect the solid connections in PCB view. You can see how quickly you could destroy a sketch by forcing two different opposing solid connections in different views and not trusting the rat's nest lines. In fact it can get so bad you're better off starting again or trying to paste your best view in a totally new sketch. Basically, if you want to do a major connection change in a view, you need to delete all the solid traces in all the other views first. Do your connection change in the view you're working on, and then trust the rat's nests in all the other views. If you want to do a major part change, you might have to right-click, delete minus, and that will remove the part without affecting the traces. Generally, most circuit design software EDAs want you to do the schematic view first and then move on to the PCB view. Because the views aren't live, it has to find all the footprint drawings of the parts you used in schematic view. Fritzing doesn't care which view you start with, just that you're consistent through all views. And if you don't need a view, you don't even have to complete it. It's still advisable to finish one view first in Fritzing before moving on to another view, and then trusting the rat's nests in those views to connect everything. Another thing about views, when you've finished one view, all the parts in the other views will be jumbled around. No circuit design software has an auto arranger, so you'll manually have to move everything in the position you want. Part 3 will look at PCB view.